welcome to the Window Soul and Central Podcast 159 for May 8th, 2013. Hey folks, Dan Rubino here with Windows Phone Central and Jay Bennett. Also again, yes, we're actually returning. We did our series wasn't canceled. Our ratings are still good. <laughs> we're just uh been busy these last few weeks. Actually, I think Jay and I were able to do a podcast, but our producer, Mr. Renee Ritchie from iMore, was yeah. Out of town. It's basically Renee's fault. For, it's basically for, Renee's fault. Right, right. And the best thing is, we were together in New York. That's so true, this, but. This is Renee. And I think that's what made it even worse was the fact we were together and we still couldn't do the podcast. <laughs> in theory, that would make things easier, but it didn't. No. So. So but. instead, you've got us back this week uh, after, I think it's six weeks. We've had a six week hiatus. Can we call it? Yeah, there we go. A six week hiatus. Um, everyone shouting, we turn up my microphone. There's nothing I can do. My microphone is at maximum. Apparently, the recorder is making me a little bit quiet. Um, the best thing that I can hopefully suggest is that Dan turns his down and perhaps someone else goes up. But if nothing else, I will shout as loud as I possibly can. So, um, we're back. Sorry about those six, uh, those six weeks delay. Um, and as we've, we've explained why we were gone. Um, but we have a slightly new podcast format to try out today. Uh, and by slightly new, I mean I've rearranged sort of how we sort out our topics. Uh, for those of you who don't know behind the scenes, it's me who writes the podcast and uh, because Dan's <laughs> usually far too busy with, you know, doing with everything else on the entire I website. make the website. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's quite fair, really. <laughs> You've got most of the work. Um, so I just pitch in every now and again do this. So we have a new uh, format. We're going to start off with talking about uh, conversational topics, things that we want to, things that have popped up either this week or the last week. Um, they could basically are worth chatting about and we're going to try and hopefully introduce a bit more of a, an interactive element into the podcast so chat room we'd really like you guys to get involved with our conversational topics this week and then we'll move on to the news you care about of course all the windows phone news that's uh, been going on the last couple of weeks the highlights and a couple of apps that are worth your intention uh, and then let's finish off as always with community comments so yeah please get involved um dan do you want to start us off with the first conversational item if you're still there and can hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? You've gone incredibly quiet for some reason. I think we're having more producing problems. It might just be me. I turned myself. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, you turned yourself very, very down. <laughs> In the meantime, I will hit people up with the link. How's that? That's better. Um, so, yeah. The first thing we're, going to, we're talking about is... Uh, it basically was mentioned to me on Twitter last week, and it was an interesting item that was brought up, and I think it came up in an awful lot of uh, our forums as well. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm dropping the link out into the chat room now, we got the, the new Facebook beta uh, app for Windows Phone 8 uh, completely revamped. It doesn't look anything like the old one. In fact, it looks an awful lot like the, the uh, iOS and the Android uh, counterparts. Um, and the first thing that came up uh, from most of our audience was, this isn't Metro, this is not Metro, and we, we don't like it. Um, what we want to talk about the first thing today is, do we need to faithfully stick to Metro? Can we agree, perhaps, that when we have good interaction, it doesn't matter whether or not it's perfectly Metro, it's all more about getting a good UI and something that's familiar for people? Um, or do people feel that everything has to be Metro? Uh, so <laughs> already straight away a lot of people are saying no and are very upset about the fact that it's uh, that it's Metro. Others are saying Metro isn't good for everything. Um, we're going to start off with Dan's opinion on this. So Dan, you've maybe had a little bit of a chance to play with the new Facebook app. Um, what do you, I know you don't use Facebook much, but what are your feelings about the app design? I actually like the app design. I think it looks great. As a non-Facebook user, I do have a, you know, like a fake account that I play around with. But I think this app looks great um and people who aren't who are saying that it's not metro i think are i don't know it, it is metro there's you know there's a lot of you know flat icons in there still in fact the icons actually haven't changed just a thing you say it looks dramatically different a lot of ways it actually doesn't look dramatically different it uses the same facebook design from their website and the previous app and so it maintains a lot of that but I'm not down with this whole idea that everything needs to have a black background, white text, with just like a couple icons. It works for some things. In fact, we have the People Hub and the Facebook, you know, notification area and stuff like that. And for following people, you can do that. And that's okay. But, you know, these are brands. And there's two, there's a fight here between the design UI, but design UI shouldn't be 100% universal and every app looks the same. Not to mention Facebook, like I said, 
is a brand. They have an identity. They want people to be able to pick up their app. Uh, if they're coming from the iPhone and they get a Windows phone, they want to be able to the user to be able to pick up their app and be like, oh, I'm familiar with this. I've seen this before and I know how to use it as opposed to you know, being dropped into this whole other metro world. And I find some of the people in our comments just a little bit like zealots when it comes to the UI. I mean, I don't find this like garish. There is no skeuomorphism going on. There's no like photorealistic icons. So it's not like they went to this extreme. And the actual designer, one of the designers behind the Windows Phone UI, Arturo, who wrote this great article that spurred this uh, discussion, yeah. He actually says that, no, it is actually Metro, that it, in fact it's sort of the next evolution of it. And we should be happy about that, that developers are taking some of those principles but going further with it. And so it's this, no, it's this contrast between do you have follow everything to the T and you let design dictate your app or do you do your own thing and take those principles into consideration? So Exactly. It's an interesting world the sort of Windows Phone developers get uh, thrust into because for those of us who aren't considered who aren't particularly strong at uh, our own user interface design or those of us who perhaps don't have you know degrees in design or somebody around who can do graphic design and user interface design for us metro provides us with a set of guidelines set a set of fairly but not entirely specific rules that allows us to create something which we know will be intuitive to windows phone users because it's based around the ui they're already familiar with now this sort of thing didn't really exist on uh iPhone, although there were some areas, and definitely not on Android until very recently. Uh, and it, having that sort of Wild West has allowed other design principles, other user interface and other user uh, experience uh, metaphors to form. Uh, and actually, there's things to be learned from all these other uh, interfaces because Metro is not the correct uh, situation for everything. And one of the, uh, the words that's put out there all the time is, you know, everything is usually built around the panorama or the pivot control. Uh, and when everything is built around the principle of you just swipe right to go to more, it's great for an initial um, navigation, for getting around most of the phone. Uh, but it does kind of mean that you end up feeling like you've got the same app over and over again. Now, that's not to say that apps can't differentiate. And in fact, those that are a bit more smart about what they have in their backgrounds, about the coloring, the, the brand colors that are used, it ends up being that, you know, we'll see some awesome looking Metro apps, but we'll also see an awful lot of very bland, very similar ones. It's kind of like going, you know, to different cities, but walking into kind of the same bar just with, you know, slightly different ales or different beers on it. You know, you're not really getting a different experience. And if some designers want to jump out of that, then that's fantastic. Um, I think Fuse is a really good example. Do you remember Fuse? Uh, one of Rudy's sure. um, apps. He brought that along and that didn't have much of a didn't have an amazing metro feel it was you know there was some typography in there but a lot of his transitions and ideas were very much pulled you out of the metro experience and it was richer for it right yeah and that's a great example of uh, an app that you know veered from the pure metro design and yet still won on you know great looks and i think many people in our audience would be like oh yeah that's right fuse is a pretty amazing app and then you know you got to point out to them well that technically isn't metro yet either so there's definitely room here, and it depends on what the developer wants to bring as an experience to the user. And so I'm not down with this whole idea that, no, you have to obey everything, you know, by the, this weird metro design thing. Mm -hmm. um, not to mention that's been loosely defined, what that exactly means. Most people don't have a hard time articulating exactly what metro UI is. Absolutely and so. You know, it's going to evolve. And at some point, this needs to move beyond what we've seen in Windows Phone 7 and, you know, continuing to 8. The, the UI is going to have to change and things will have to be added and mixed up. So, you know, we have to let developers a little breathing room, I think, to experiment. Yeah. And the other thing as well is, you know, taking completely moving away from the user interface and just moving towards a secondary argument. You know, you already made the very, very, very valid point that it makes it easier for other people to come over and get used to the Facebook uh, platform. Let's, let's be honest, for a lot of people, is one of the main apps they use. Um, I certainly know some friends of mine that only really use Facebook apps on their phones, and the rest are kind of just fads that they try. Um, come, not only does it show that it's be easier for people to transition, but it also shows that Facebook are now viewing Windows Phone as very a very real operating system that they need to support, uh, which is more than we can say for other social networks. Uh, and I think we should be encouraging the fact that this unified design could come over and actually using it as a halo for hey look a design uh, you know a design that facebook came up with that's been really popular with their own users uh, has 
come across to Windows Phone has ported well. It's fluid. It works quickly. It's not some cheap port. And you can do this on Windows Phone now. If you decide that you want to bring over your own design language, you can. And I think that's a fantastic thing for a lot of the larger developers. Yeah, yeah. But All right. I'm quite keen to see what our chat room thinks uh, about this as well. Some, one of the interesting things we've got is things like uh, Derek D'Souza, I think I can say, says that uh, he much prefers minimalism over Metro, which I think is a very valid point as well. Um, there's uh, talk as well from uh, Rodri saying that the, uh, the Twitter app is similar to other platform apps. Uh, and yet it uses obviously the right. pivot gesture, which is, you know, Twitter, I think you and I were obviously in Mobile World Congress when Twitter updated their app. Uh, mm -hmm. And what we saw, we both said the same thing. It feels similar, but they've managed to keep it. The fact that you've got the right-hand swiping navigation rather than having to tap means that you've got a kind of pivot feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a really good example. Uh, so, yeah, chat room, keep your comments coming. We're really yeah, keen to, to see what you guys think about all this sort of stuff. Um, do you want to take us on to the next story, speaking about Facebook? Yeah, let's talk about how they are enforcing their trademark. So this story came out yesterday. Apparently, 41 app developers have received a letter from, well, basically from Microsoft telling them to pull their apps from the store or they'll have their app pulled for them. And the reason for that is because there is 40, if you do a search for Facebook in the store right now, you just get a lot of nonsense. Now, I understand some developers like JDB Software and, and others have made serious attempts to make a better Facebook app, but a lot of them are just web wrappers. And if you're a new user coming to Windows Phone and you try to search for Facebook, you're going to just deal with like a lot of nonsense. And so Facebook, in conjunction with Microsoft, with this official app, looks to have finally had enough, so they're enforcing their trademark and they want those apps pulled. Now, technically, this doesn't mean those apps can't exist. You know, um, They can just be renamed. It's the same thing we saw with the YouTube apps. Uh, you know, Google did the same thing on the Windows Phone Store last year. And so, but we still have Metro 2, Prime 2, MyTube, and all of those. Mm -hmm. And they even exist on the Windows 8 store. So these apps can come back, and some of these developers will resubmit their apps with a new redesign and new title. And in which case, if people still want that experience, they can get it. And that's a good thing. But this, you know, some of these apps, you know, we pointed out one was literally called Facebook Beta WP8 or something like that. Yeah. And, and considering you can't actually search for the Facebook beta app, which is kind of strange, uh, if you actually search for it, that's the first thing that comes up. And it's like, but that's not real, you know? So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm, I'm all for this. I think it's fine. I, so, so long as you can put an app out there that's not called Facebook and doesn't use their logo but accesses the site, I'm totally fine with that. But don't call your app Facebook or Facebook beta and, you know, that's just... Yes. Yeah. So, so there's there's two different uh, sort of areas of discussion here. Number one, is, as as you're quite rightly pointing out, is the guys who kind of sit on. It's kind of like domain sitting, isn't it? Right. When you people will buy up domains and try and make money off the fact that they've got the name. Um, you know, we've got we had it. They had the same thing. There was WP Central apps that went out and tried to effectively, uh, you know, screech off the name, and it's, it's you know, it's a pain because it's for the for those developers in so, a lot of the cases they're just trying to make a quick buck or trying to you know get you just to view their advertising program and try and make some money off you and um, then there is the there's the discussion to be had about whether or not facebook should be allowed to do this or whether or not apps uh, companies in general should enforce their trademark so strictly uh, depending on whether or not they've got their own apps but we'll come back to that one and then there was the other one which you you sort of mentioned in the uh, the article you're speaking about you know some of the developers they were actually perhaps trying to bring their own facebook experience um, and how do we feel about you know, those that were trying to, in some way, were trying to uh, sort of enhance what Facebook had already put out at the time. Right. So, I, you know, I'm, like I said, I already said my opinion on this. So I, mm. and I think most people are seem to be in agreement that there was just too much crap in the store. It was bad for the platform. It's bad for Facebook. It's bad for everybody. So call your app something else, put it back on the store, and let's move on. You know, uh, I don't blame companies for, trying to avoid confusion, especially now that there's actually sort of like this Facebook beta, which will go, you know, out of beta in a, probably a couple of weeks. And it's mm -hmm. going to come for Windows Phone 7 as well. So I totally understand, you know, they want to yeah. have a prime brand on there. No, it's quite, and it's quite right. And, you, you know, when you use someone else's trademarks, you have to accept the fact that you you are going to bring yourself into, uh, into all kinds of 
uh, potential legal heat. Um, there was, of course, the, the argument made around the, the BBC News situation. For those who aren't familiar, uh, there, was a, there was a very popular BBC News mobile app uh, that was developed, developed by uh, Lawrence Grippers here in the UK. Um, his app was effectively pulled uh, because of a trademark claim from BBC. Uh, the difference in that situation is that BBC, of course, don't have their own app on the store. What they've done is they've enforced the trademark without you know, providing any kind of uh, serious backup. Now, they'll argue that it's because they want everyone to use their mobile site. They want this unified mobile site experience, and they don't really do an awful lot with their Android and iOS apps. Um, but it's, I think there, it's a different kind of situation. I think it's difficult to to get behind the companies making trademark claims if they haven't got their own strong uh, first-party efforts. Um, I'm trying to think of some other examples of ones that uh, we had. Speed we had test. In the past. Speed, speed test. test. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah, what happened with speed test? I'm trying to remember that. Who was the guy who originally made one? I don't know. Some guy on XDA, he made an app and, you know, it was really nice. And then it got, he got a C and D and they didn't have an app. And it was about eight or nine months later before they came out with an official one. Hmm. Um, I think one of the uh, ones that uh, kid, say Kid Genius in the chat room is sort of echoing what we're saying, so that devs shouldn't use trademark names. You know, they're inviting themselves into that kind of uh, problem. Um, oh, I thought another one, of course, uh, on BBC uh, Podcast Lounge, the uh, the app that uh, I currently use for my podcasting. Uh, they, of course, started out as BBC Podcast Lounge, uh, and BBC effectively said to them that you, you know, you guys can't use our name you can't prominently feature our content that's fine and they're right and they're absolutely yeah. they're absolutely right in that because it's I, it's correct. it's a stupid name and it was confusing uh it's not bbc it's not bbc endorsed it's okay. why use their name uh put it in the well, app that's thing. it was it was bbc content that was the thing that was the problem they were using the bbc content as you know this is how you can sure. browse and look at all their items but what bbc said there which i think was very fair is they said look if you completely change the app name and you take our content away from being prominent you know switch it to someone else then it was acceptable and that's what got to what they what those guys went away and they did and i think that was you know, the right call and it, it circles us back to what you were saying of course about facebook about the concept of if people can rename those apps bring them in as maybe not being uh, being called social something or you know not being using the facebook name then absolutely go for it if you think you've got a market there then if that. your app is a good app it'll stand on its own and if you if you're smart, you'll come up with a clever name for it. You don't need to rely on everybody else's work to make yours shine. If you are, you're a scam artist. So I have no sympathy for these companies. I'm sorry, I just don't. I think it's right. You know, I just think it's bad business. Now, a lot of people ask, why doesn't Microsoft do something about this? And I'll tell you why. Because it's not their job to uh, step in and act as a trademark enforcer on behalf of other companies is not something that they want to get involved with because you get into a lot of legal matters there. And technically, they can't do that. They're not supposed to enforce other companies' trademarks for them without their permission or express consent. The only reason Microsoft acts on these things, and they only do it when they are requested to legally by these companies. So until Google complains or Facebook complains, they're, no, they're in no position to say, you know, you can't have it in there. Because then it gets into other complicated issues like the Tube apps, MyTube, uh, PrimeTube, MetroTube. Yeah. You, know, it, it, you know, at, at what point does a name change, you know, not be infringing and what about logo design all this so i mean it, it this is something i don't think we want microsoft to get involved with because if you thought wait times were long for apps now go ahead add some more work to microsoft's platter for evaluating <laughs> logos and titles and see how long your apps take it's just not you know so i think the current system is fine it, it's unfortunate but you know if developers want to make apps after their own brand then they should just you know not be surprised if this were to happen. No, it's a really, it's a really good point. It's the kind of thing. It, as a developer, if you want to go in and try and make a third-party app and use it to, you know, push someone else to make one, that's fine. You know, as long as you're legally protected or at least aren't selling the app to the point where you're just trying to make something better. Fourth and Mayor, our, our uh, chat room is bringing up as a perfect example. Uh, right. It's a Foursquare app. It doesn't use the Foursquare name. You know, it's cleverly riffing on the name. Um, and for many, as we say, we was featured on our podcast so many times all the, over the years. Uh, it's, it was the pinnacle of Foursquare apps for the platform. Uh, right. We've now got what some would say is now a better Foursquare app, the new uh, one that's developed in tangent with Nokia. We'll come on to that in a, in a bit. Um, that is how to perhaps approach these. You know, make a quality third-party app, 
have it, you know, send it to us, send it to the to us here and say that I've made this, I'm really proud of it and I'd like some exposure and we'll take a look at it. That's you know, that's what we're here for. Um yeah, I think I think you've not the hell nail on the head there. Uh so we'll move on. Uh the next story is or the next uh article to chat about is of course your editorial uh this was yesterday um you entitled it the rise of windows phone 8 new hero apps breathed life and legitimacy into microsoft's mobile os and i thought it was quite important to chat about this one because we've had so many times in the past when you and i've been able to say we think this is it we think this is the cusp we think that things are going to change now and we're going to really start seeing some mainstream acceptance and why do we think it's different this time it just feels like everything is finally clicking with the mainstream and consumers. Um, you know, Microsoft seems to have a new, I don't know, they seem to be more aggressively pushing all this between we're seeing uh, TV commercials be, uh, in front of movies. We're seeing all these major apps coming out and there's more coming down the road. There is new hardware coming out. The Lumia 920 seems to be catching on with people. You know, it just mm-hmm. seems like that, there's finally this make or break moment, you know, combined with like, um, you know, BlackBerry is now where Windows Phone was two years ago, where everybody's like, oh, that's great, that's fantastic, and no one cares, just tumbleweeds blowing. And, you know, now we're, we're getting momentum, and that's what really it comes down to. And so I really think with the next couple of weeks when we see some of these new hardware devices coming out and uh, further apps coming to the store, it's just going to... You know, it's adding legitimacy to the platform. People are like taking notice now. I'm seeing more and more people saying now they think about switching because some of these apps are available. So it just yeah. feels like this is finally the moment. I, I completely agree with you, and I'm starting to really see it as well. Like I go and sit down on the train now. You know, sit on the London Overground, and the the, the girl next to me has got a Lumia 820, or one of my girlfriend's friends has picked up a Lumia 820. We kind of do have Nokia to thank for this, and people like to riff on us as a site saying that we talk too much about Nokia. It's because they are still making the headlines, and they are still making so many devices. Um, the Lumia 520 as well, I think, is the perfect example. That that phone is gaining traction. Um, that price level, I know a friend of mine, I just mentioned it to her, I said, look, you can get this great phone, it's 130 quid, 99 pounds on pay as you go, and you just pop in a, you know, a, another SIM if you want to. That's, right. that's so cheap, and that phone is making, you know, making turning heads. Um, already, we had the data from Ad Duplex out this week, which was suggesting that it was sort of, oh, it was ousting the uh, 820 already, and it has been out for how long? Uh, you know, a couple months. Yeah, the 820 is a weird phone. Even like that's one that's the one device I actually don't own, and <laughs> there's just something about it. It feels very middle child, where there's it's not a bad device. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just uninteresting. I mean, get into the, uh, the, the the chat room here as well. So people are saying similar kind of thing. You know, they, they spot a couple of the 820s uh, in places where people are trying to sell them. Um, but uh, everyone, I think, is saying, yeah, the 520 is what we're seeing around is what's helping. Yeah, the 520, you get the extreme price point difference, but still some interesting hardware. The 620 actually doesn't even really fit in with the Lumia like line. It's actually pretty designed kind of differently, yeah. but it's awesome looking. The 720 is just so brand new that it feels like they took, you know, as I said before, the 920 and improved upon it, uh, although it's still got some lower specs, but it's a really solid device. And the 820 is just like, it's there, it's kind of nice. Like, even at t has the 820, and I could have gotten it numerous times, but it just comes in black, and they don't really have the cases available to replace it. And it's just like, it's just kind of boring. I really can't deal with black phones anymore. Speaking of, I finally... Uh, <laughs> converted here to the full yellow, the yellow Lumia 920. 920. After I had the yellow 720, like I had to get this. And now I'm all about the yellow phone. But um, I'm quite jealous of that, I must admit. Yeah, yeah. And I got this cool case, which everybody keeps asking me about, this uh, baby blue, which kind of goes good with the yellow. Uh, and I was going to do an article on it. But honestly, I ordered this months ago, and I don't remember where I got it from or who sells it. <laughs> uh, and I've been trying to track it down, and as soon as I do, I'll let you guys know. But uh, yeah, oh, uh, I'm so a bit bored of my white now. I could do with a, a splash of color um, for the article that we did about uh, changing the case yourself as it was as a, a option. But right. so, yeah, I think a lot of people are saying some sort of things. Are, obviously, most of our users are going to talk about the nine twenty. It's the phone that most of our uh, readers and certainly the listeners will have. It's the, the flagship, the the uh, the high end one. But it is Lumia as a brand is pushing Windows Phone into the forefront and it is 
in a lot of ways it is Nokia's uh, marketing and it is you know Nokia's dedication to the platform which is what has brought about these these new hero apps um and it's what might even we're not we're not sure but might even bring a real Instagram client onto this uh, onto the platform in the Fingers next few crossed. weeks you, you know we're <laughs> There are some rumors that would suggest we might hear something about it next week. Um, I don't know whether or not I trust them because we've all been burned before. Yeah, <laughs> I think it was at Mobile World Congress. Uh, yeah. The 41 megapixel Windows phone is going to be showing off as long as well as their tablet. Oh, yeah, None yeah, of that's yeah. happened. And I'm not expecting that stuff to happen this coming week either. So, um, yeah, I don't know about the Instagram thing. I, I still think it's sort of like the YouTube app where, you know, Microsoft had that YouTube app. So if you if you go back like a year, um, yeah, you know Microsoft said we have a, a high quality YouTube app waiting to be deployed, but we need permission from Google, and now we have a high quality YouTube app. So I mean, it's it's like the, it's supposedly the same thing with Instagram. They actually have the app ready. They just gotta do whatever they need to. But who knows the details with that? I, and I'm not being coy here. I honestly don't know uh, if anything will happen next week. And to be honest, I'm leaning towards no. I'm actually yeah, leaning exactly. towards that there won't be an Instagram announcement. Um, yeah, but I think, uh, you know, if anything, that's the... We can kind of assume that if it is going to happen, it might actually be with Nokia. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, uh, I really don't know which way it's going to go on this because I don't understand why Instagram are waiting. Um, I don't quite understand. You know, I don't think anyone can really point and decide why it's happening and why Instagram is taking their time. Uh, there's no real logic behind it, and that's kind of why Nokia was trying the uh, the two Insta with love um, campaign. Right. It was to try and show that people you know, there was an audience, there was a market that wants it. Um, and let's also talk about uh, you know we, we're talking about the hero apps. Let's talk about Pandora as well, of course, that got released uh, recently. We've mentioned it before. Widely considered to be the best Pandora app on any platform. Am I right? Although it still lacks, I think, some features compared to like iOS. It doesn't have like a lyrics function and some other things. But still, it's a great – I use it every night. I use it when I go to the gym. I throw it on with Wi-Fi, and it's just fantastic. It's really good. Um, but, yeah, I mean, all of these apps just – they're not just getting titles. Like the Hulu app, right, the Hulu Plus, which you, you probably haven't been able to try because you're in the U.K. But it's not just that – it's not that we just have this app now with this service. They're actually really nice apps. They're quality apps. They're apps you can be proud of when you show off to people. You're going to get, you know, it's going to raise an eyebrow. And so, and that's the other important distinction here. It's not like Microsoft is just throwing these things out. They're, uh, they're actually really well done. And so, you know, that's a, that's a good thing to not only have these services available, but also do it in a way that's like pretty cool. Yeah, certainly the market is actually maturing to the point now where we can see these quality apps and these things will then make their way onto or have made their way from Windows 8 as well. The Windows 8 effect is starting to happen as well. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah. we... And that's the other thing are, too, right? I mean, I was going to say Windows 8, Surface, uh, we got the new Xbox that's going to be announced pretty soon. You know, there's so much momentum going on. Windows 8 Blue, Windows Phone Blue, all these changes build. It's just like it's going to be a crazy summer. And this, you know, brand awareness is all being tied together now. And it's just, I think it's going to really start to catch on as people become more familiar with the tiles on Windows 8. They're going to look at Windows Phone and see the similarities. So there's just a lot of opportunity here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, and that, that ties up our conversational point. Uh, so let's going to move on to uh, the news you care about. Uh, first things first, of course, next week, uh, the, the new Lumio announcement. Uh, Daniel, I'm... I, I, told is going to be flying over to the uk which is uh, usually cause for alarm but i'm told that uh, the proper precautions are being taken with your arrival uh, yeah. but, uh, you know may 14th uh, that is what is it when tuesday next god blimey, less than a week away um we will be what so let's see what's the what does the tease say that nokia sent out it says the nokia lumia story continues so straight away we know for a fact that we are going to see a new uh, lumia device uh, we also know that they're announcing this in, in its, you know, in their own uh, their own uh, press conference. This is not shared limelight, so we can kind of expect that we're going to see something high end. We're going to see something which is, you know, not like the 520 and the 720 that we saw at Mobile World Congress. We're expecting something that's designed to be a flagship phone here. Mm -hmm. Do we know yeah. exactly what we're going to be seeing, really? I, well, I mean, the rumored name is it's the Lumia 925, and the 928 is the Verizon variant of that. Um, yeah. 
And that's about all we know. I mean, it's going to be probably the aluminum-based device that we've seen the images leaked, you know, the, those prototype images, um, which, you know, everybody was like, oh, my God, it looks terrible, you know. But, like, to be honest, every time a prototype image is leaked out of a new Nokia <laughs> phone, people are like, it looks bad. I mean, terrible. people are just like, and then, it, and then Nokia actually shows it off, and everybody, like, drools, you know. So I think people need to really get into the habit when we leak shots of stuff, it, you know, be enthused, be like, oh, that's cool, but reserve judgment. This is why Nokia and other companies hate when leak shots come out because they don't want their product presented, you know, on someone's coffee table, low lit, bl blurry, and, you know, uh, just looking terrible, especially if it's not even finished yet. You know, they want to be able to show off their, you know, their new device with the, you know, proper lighting and all that kind of stuff. So I think when people actually see this phone, they're going to actually be really impressed by it because you're just basically taking the 920 putting an aluminum frame on it, making it thinner or lighter, and improving everything else around it. Um, you know, I, I think at this point, we need to trust Nokia, right, when it comes to design. I'm not saying every single thing they're going to make is going to be amazing, but clearly this Lumia line, they've, they have a style, and it's been very successful. So I'm, I'm just saying let's just step back and wait to see what they show off and not be too critical of those, um, those images that we leaked a little while ago. So, but I expect that. I don't really expect them to announce like five devices or anything like that. I don't expect a phablet. Oh God, I hate that word. Uh, I'm also not <laughs> expecting a Windows 8 no. tablet or anything like this. I, I wish, you know, I, I could say that. I am also not expecting the EOS, the 41 megapixel device. I don't think that's going to come till later this summer. So I think we're just going to get this one big flagship phone, you know, maybe the Verizon thing. I'm not really sure. So. No, you're but, absolutely right, and I, I said I don't think we're going to see a tablet at all. I, I think it would be if they actually do announce a tablet, it will take everyone a bit by shock. Um, the fact that we've seen so much, you know, we had the the uh, the sort of mini advertising campaign for the the Lumia uh, camera being shot on the roller coaster that was put out. Was it today that came around? Uh, yeah, this morning. Hints. Yeah, there's been a lot of hints from the guys at Nokia that say, you know, oh, actually, we are, you know, we're prepping for a new. Lumia phone device, um, and I'm also not. Sure yeah, and that well, that was definitely for the 928. I mean, because yeah. if you go to the 928 placeholder page, it actually links to that video, and so uh, okay. it's it, that's clearly the 928 that they showed off on the roller coaster. And that video, by the way, is literally shot like two miles from where I live. Like I pass that place every single night, Adventureland. Um, kind of, and like this is where I pointed out in the arc. I've got a piss, no kidding, and call like, hey, we're in town. Uh, we're taking them a great pizza places call me next time okay come on uh, but yeah yeah that was a cool little video so but that was clearly for the 928 so we'll have to wait and see what they show next week but one thing i i think i, I want to do is dial it down a bit like i said you know i don't think they're going to announce all those other things uh, and the only reason i say that's because every time we've have these events come up we've always sort of over predicted what they were going to show <laughs> and then it turns out and it's not that we were disappointed it was just like oh okay you know that was an amazing phone they they re did reveal but they didn't reveal all these other things so you know let's not get too crazy with this announcement but it'll be fun and i'm excited about going to the uk it's gonna be uh i'm actually going out a day early so i'll be able to see london a little it's true say, you, you, the last time you might think you got down we're here for about 48 hours and then decided to run again yeah, right. So, um, yeah, it'll be fun, though. So make sure you turn in, tune in to our site next week. We'll be doing a live blog of the event. We'll be doing a podcast later on that day. And we're going to have, well, you know, the best Windows phone news to bring you. <laughs> All right, let's yeah, move we, on to... Hmm? That's what I was going to say. Is it's really quite exciting to be able to talk about new devices again because it's been a little while for us. Um, 920's been out for six months. I know it's that, that feels like forever. I mean, the five twenty and seven twenty were cool, and you know you love the seven twenty. I know you do. Um, yeah, I still gotta uh, get that review done. But <laughs> yeah, I love the nine twenty so much. I bought my second one already. But that tells you if I'm already on my second one, I got to uh, get a new. Because, one. It's not because your first one broke. It's just because you're absolutely. You know, you just needed it in yellow. You needed something. Actually, else. I had a good excuse because Derek Kessler, <laughs> who used to run WebOS Nation, needed a Windows Phone eight device, and I was like, well, you could take my white one. And I'll get a yellow one. So ah, or, is that what he, he's you've given him? Yep. So okay. anywho. Uh yeah. so the nine twenty eight thing we did that. Uh oh, the wedding video. So let's quickly talk about the new Microsoft ad. This ties into the earlier discussion. 
Microsoft revealed a new ad directed by a Coppola, one of the famous Coppolas. Uh, and I love this ad. I thought it was hilarious. It was very entertaining. It's the one where, of course, the Android, specifically Samsung people, fight with the iPhone. iSheep. iSheep. Um, <laughs> and it was very entertaining. It was hilarious. It, it caused people to, I don't know, laugh a little bit. I think I think the funny the, the thing is the funniest part of that entire um, <laughs> the entire advert for me unfortunately is one which is a feature that Windows Phone has it's the NFC sharing part when they just go wee <laughs> as they oh, yeah. beam it to each yeah. other right. and I'm secretly thinking Windows Phone can do that too don't make sure no Windows Phone can do that we just don't like necessarily brag about it in the same way that you know because there are like specific commercials for it a Samsung Galaxy that show them sharing photos yeah. and, and yeah, I'm the still one, the one of the wife uh, who beams the husband a video as she as he leaves apparently because you can transfer yeah. video NFC is video right still now. I'm glad we have it but come NFC on I, I've nice. used it like five times so far <laughs> so you it's mad. you need you need to get the um the I know uh, your stupid JBL words. power up. Yeah. Okay. I, I have that. I have a JBL power up. It's amazing. Yeah, but how many times do you use NFC with it? Every day I use it because you tap and it syncs and it does it. It's just wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, still, actually, I've been using it more or less with the vertical stand because I use it with the Nokia built-in weather clock thing, which is kind of fun. Um, but still, no, so it's a great commercial. A lot of people were like, you know, I actually was making fun of Renee about this because he was saying that, oh, it was ineffectual because they actually showed more, uh, you know, was more of an ad for Samsung and the iPhone than it was for Windows Phone. And yet the ad is now like four and a half million views within a week on YouTube. It's on TV and it seems to be resonating pretty well. And that's really all commercials are meant to do is to get people talking so that next time they go into a store, you know, they, that phone all of a sudden is like, oh, that's right, that's the one I saw on TV. Let me see what that's all about, you know. And so I, I think in that sense it was pretty effective. Yeah, and that's it. It's it's not – people – we got a lot of people saying – and even Android Central kind of ripped into us saying, oh, right. you forgot to sell Windows Phone in that, you know, and you forgot to do this, that, and the other, and tell us about the new ideas. Do you remember Samsung's uh, shots at, uh, at iOS, the ones around the barista, you know, the guy who's a barista actually, and he thinks he's all creative and they're all waiting in line for the iPhone. I, in some cases, the advert doesn't need to be about selling the right, phone. It right. needs to be about just piquing interest. Right. And that's all ads are supposed to do. I know people want this like 30 second infomercial where they go list all the features and somehow sell you on earth. We can't possibly do that. Even still, we do have those commercials. The Windows Phone Challenge commercials are out there, and there, there were the the Gwen Stefani ones. You know, so there were plenty of ads that do play in conjunction with this ad that do show off the features. It's not you can't do everything in a thirty second ad. You just can't. So you either have something really interesting that kind of you know makes you laugh, or you show a feature based commercial. But the combo is what really sells. It's it's about the whole. Uh, program of advertising everything that's involved with it not just a single ad and so i think this ad is great uh it's great to see them finally make a, a solid commercial so yeah no agreed and um, we've had a lot of people in the chat room ask us about uh nova 3 or n-o-v-a-3 if it's, it's probably supposed to pronounce something on those um which of course is the the very the very popular uh, sci-fi gaming uh game uh it's basically a lot of people call it sort of the people say it's kind of influenced by uh by halo or influenced by crisis and there are some you know similarities uh it's made by the same guys who uh, who came up with uh you know, by game loft the guys who came out with uh modern combat 4 whatever it's called uh game loft seemed to be kind of ripping on uh, a lot of the f the popular first person shooters on consoles and pcs and well also, microsoft uh, is not going to do it <laughs> that's a very like game good point you know? um, so yeah, it's basically a case of the game is coming. We were under the impression it was coming this week via a, a French source. Uh, it looks like it's not going to be coming this week. All we know is that it is due in May, so it will be right. before the end of this month. Um, obviously, a lot of people are very excited for it because uh, even though the control, I still find the controls of these games a bit too awkward for myself. Apparently, uh, Paul will tell you that you do get used to it over time enough to have a really good time with the game, and it does look graphically pretty damn impressive. Uh, it was, you know, it's the kind of thing which 
you you'll want to try out you'll want to sort of have a go see if it's for you give it a give it a couple of uh, hours and see if you can get used to it just don't expect your battery to last while you're doing it because that's the real problem uh, so yeah nova 3 or nova 3 i've i'd love to know what that stand what's it stand for near orbit vanguard alliance there you go of course yeah of course <laughs> near orbit what's well, you know they're not on the surface or anything fools <laughs> but uh, effectively it will be you know it will be coming hopefully within may um Sully Manzade, uh, Manzade sorry, is asking, you know, things like uh, the EA games, Dead Space and Mass Effect. So I'd love to see Mass Effect come to, uh, uh, come to us. I don't think that will happen because they're old IPs now. And I think that people will, uh, you know, I think that they just won't get ported. There won't be enough uh, desire for them until perhaps a new Dead Space comes out and they want to bring back that old IP. Uh, kind of like they did with Assassin's Creed for Windows Phone. That got brought back when a new Assassin's Creed was coming out. Yeah, um, people talking snap about EA, which I kind of agree with. I've, I've never really been impressed, even with the game loft games. I'm just kind of like, eh. Um, Modern Combat 4, I'll say it's interesting, but I haven't bought it. And I don't plan to, mostly because I don't have time to sit around and play these games. They're too involved. <laughs> um, I'd rather play to my yeah. Xbox if I wanted to play a game like that. I, yeah. I'm so bad with games. I bought... Bioshock Infinite oh, and, and and Injustice, and I barely played either one of them. They're, I just don't have time, but you know, I'll get around you've to it. I start. To, you've got to play uh, Bioshock. I am. I I, I I I am. I'm like walking around now in the little cloud village or whatever. It's a long day. <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Oh, there we go. Daniel Rubino's review of Bioshock Infinite. I'm walking around in a cloud village. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> Listening to a lot of people talk, <laughs> you know, eavesdropping on conversations, lots of fun. Yeah, but, but, uh, <laughs> let's talk about Instagram because let's just get out of the way. Although people are probably already sick of Instagram. Uh, so, Instagram is made by a single developer who also makes a, a, a pin, Pinterest app mm -hmm. called Pinspiration. I hate that name. All those names. It's like Pinterest. Okay. Um, so he's making this app. Interest, you know? He did it. I, I get it. I just, I don't it's, like it's, that. It's I think that's a cheat. I know. It's a, lame, if you it's a lame way of coming up with a new word. Anywho, uh, the, so this developer is coming out with this app. I'm beta testing it along with Sam. Uh, he did this now because... He likes reverse engineering and hacking stuff, basically. And so he broke the API for Instagram so that he could directly post without their permission, which I think is really funny. Um, you know, everybody's wondering, will this get past the store? I actually think it will because I don't think the store has any uh, rules against... Once again, this isn't Microsoft's API. It's not their job to be law enforcers. They set their own rules up, but... You know, this is a gray area. A lot of YouTube apps are violating the API of, micro, or of Google, and we've seen it with some other Google apps too, unofficial third-party apps. So, I think this will get to the store. Uh, now, there's another question: whether Instagram will like also file a C and D against them at some point and ask the app to be removed. You know, that could certainly happen. Uh, although, once you have it on your phone. It's on your phone, and you can do whatever you want with it. Now, I know oh, Microsoft... A kill switch. Of course I know there's a kill yeah. switch, Jay, but they're not going to yeah. do that. Come on. They've, when was the last time they did that? The only time they've ever done that was it was about two years ago. They did it for a pirated GPS app, which is a different story, right? That was actual, you know... Yeah, but if you install an app on your phone and it gets later pulled, they're not going to re revoke it on your device here and the Microsoft phone do that. So, you know, it's one of those things and I, people are going to wonder, it's going to be like a dollar 49 when it comes out, if they should buy it, you know, because there's two things to consider. One, is there an official Instagram app coming, uh, which would be free. And two, whether or not this gets pulled and, you know, support and all that kind of stuff. My advice is if you're really into Instagram to get it because, just because an official app may be coming, even if it does, it doesn't mean it's actually going to be good. Meaning that the early rumor was that this was like a straight up iOS port with no advanced functionality or lens support. And it's really kind of uninteresting. Sure, it works, but, you know, um, two, you know, 
this is actually pretty well designed. I, you and I have an influence sort of on, you know, the direction it takes, but I think the developer actually knows what he's doing, so I haven't given him too many pointers. Um, and number three, people are wondering, you know, well, the API, it could break and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, but this actually won't break because when the third-party Pandora apps came out, they were using sort of undocumented APIs that Pandora keeps around. And so those would change frequently without notice, in which case those apps broke. Uh, this won't happen. If this API broke, it meant that iOS and Android apps also broke, and that they were forced to up forced to update their apps. But that never, almost never happens because not everybody updates apps. Yeah, so, fair. so the what could actually happen in that case? If if I was if I was Instagram uh, technical leader and I was changing the API, you would put a a, a, flick, a a switch effectively so that the new apps that have been put out with compatibility for a new API, and then you'd phase out the old one. Right, um, right. Hopefully, the developer will be on top of that, but it it is possible. What what we're saying, as you're as you're right saying, is that it shouldn't ever break instantly as long as the developer keeps up support. Right. Um, and this, you know, this guy is. Look, the other day, you know, Pinspiration has worked for however long. He, you know, he's he's clearly not the first time he's done this. He's quite good with his undocumented APIs, uh, and I think he he was even talking about the potential of a Snapchat app, uh, which I'd be quite interested in collaborating on because right. I'd quite like to see Snapchat come onto uh, onto a Windows Phone. Um, and uh, yeah, it it looks like it might be the full featured app that everybody wants. You know, with the capability to register your account as well. Uh, certainly, if it gets past. Um, certification i'll be buying it and it'll be my introduction into the world of instagram because i've still not used it um it's kind of addicting i i hate to admit it it's it's not the quality of the photos which is crap and it's not the filters which is also kind of crap it's just the ability to follow people on uh just like twitter and comment on people's stuff like facebook but have it purely based on images instead of text. So you're just scrolling through your friends. But I have to admit that like it's become like kind of fun to use. Um, even though I think they're a terrible company, I think their web interface is horrible. I think their UI is kind of stupid too. It's confusing. Uh, you can do more, like there's stuff you can do in the app that you can't do on the web version because the web version only came out afterward. It was like, oh, we should... We should make a web version of our app so people can actually view photos in their web browsers. And so, like, you can't even, like, modify your own account in a lot of ways. It's, like, they're such a bad company that, like, I'm kind of glad Facebook bought them because it's, like, they deserve each other. Because it, 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 Instagram is, like, a brilliant idea. But here's a company that's, like, purely getting by on just luck, not real talent. And, yeah, so. But, yeah, if that's what we have. Yep, no, it's, and that's the thing. It, it looks like it will be, I say, Daniel Gary is actually in the chat room right now. So chat room, if you're listening, the Daniel Gary that's in the chat room is the same guy. Um, with any luck, he has got it through the uh, through the store. And uh, I'll, I'll say, I encourage you, those who want an Instagram. Uh, app, oh, look at that. It. He says, uh, update, update incoming notifications. So this is going to be crazy. So he's evidently adding notifications now to the app. And what's insane about that is the iPhone app and Android version don't even have that because it's just technically no API for it. So what he's doing is like some more advanced stuff, uh, which means you're going to have like a Windows Phone Instagram app that's technically more powerful than the official apps, which is pretty impressive. I presume what he's probably doing is using the uh, the uh, background agents, uh, the to uh, basically poll and just do a pop up. Right. If it's got a exactly. Uh, Renee's yeah. telling you by the way that iOS has notifications. Oh, okay. I was wrong then. That's, uh, that's oh, that's right. right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, there's something like that. But still, yeah. whatever. It, it's cool. Now the the version we got last night, we we're able to uh, post to the social network. So you can register on Twitter and Facebook to share your images, which is kind of cool. So you're, we're talking like I, full featured. I need to get on this beta, Daniel. Didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah. So that's uh, Instagram, and you know that that one's actually newsworthy. I'd say I, I'm looking forward to to seeing that. Uh, speaking of apps, let's move on to the apps worth your attention section. This is basically where we're just going to sum up uh, some of the top apps this week, which is a nice uh, was a, a fruitful list. Let me say. Um, let's start with YouTube uh, because how long have we been waiting for a good YouTube app now? And uh, since the birth of Windows Phone Seven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, it was never Microsoft's fault. It was always a thing with Google and their licensing the API. Microsoft can't release a hacked API, obviously, as an official app. But now we finally have 
this tab, which it looks great. I mean, it's nice. Uh, it too uses some different structure. Uh, it's actually kind of similar to the Facebook app where it has two things in the upper right hand corners for your accounts. Uh, and brings down like this like weird kind of menu system. So clearly they're experimenting with different UIs. Um, it's good. You know, I'm not sure I'm going to use it, to be honest. I really like MyTube. Uh, I'm playing with Prime. Yeah, I think MyTube. Actually, I, I don't have a favorite YouTube client. I think MyTube's great. PrimeTube is good. And it just came out with an update Metro today. I, and, of course, MetroTube. You know, they're all, like, really solid clients and so i don't really have a favorite one i just know they're all good and they're all kind of fun to use so i still find those a little bit more interesting but you know hey it's good like you said it, it's about having the official app so yeah and the important thing as well is that uh not only they've actually done this quite seamlessly because uh, we had a little uh, bit of trickery in our app that does uh, that tries to interface with uh, youtube which was originally the only way that we could uh, that you could play youtube videos on windows phone was just to Try and launch a, uh, basically something in the in the web browser, and Windows Phone Seven was able to pick that up and recognize that you were trying to play it with the YouTube app. Um, that automatically works with uh, the new YouTube app, so it means that any other apps that were trying to sort of do that little mini interface can just naturally send it off to YouTube, and people will have the option to choose high quality, low quality, medium quality. Uh, and so keeping that in place was you know it's fantastic news for third party developers. It means that the YouTube experiences. I would say pretty much complete on Windows Phone now. I think we can sort of sure. check that box and say move on, uh, which is great news. So if you haven't already downloaded it, it wasn't available for the UK, certainly, uh, last night. Um, it's definitely available today. So if you haven't already uh, downloaded it, uh, check out either our app. And a small update just came out, too, for it. Oh, of course, so. yeah. Some bug fix, wasn't it? We don't really know what it was. Right, right. Um, Foursquare. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to see this app coming out because uh, you and I first saw this at Mobile World Congress, of course. Um, yeah. It's what, Have you actually got a chance to use it yet? I haven't had a chance to yeah. go anywhere and actually do anything with it. I did. I logged in from the gym last night. I checked in. Uh, it's good. You know, um, What's interesting, Fourth of Mayor, I think, still gives it a more interesting, ex I don't want to say more interesting, but a different experience. Fourth of Mayor is very much what I think people were talking about with a pure minimalist metro design. And in that sense, I think it's really cool. The new Foursquare app, though, is a lot more, you know, graphic intensive and prettier and embellished. Uh, I almost find if you're going to criticize a new Facebook app for not being Metro, you'd have to make the same argument for the new Foursquare app. Because I, once again, I'm not saying I agree with it not being Metro, but clearly they're experimenting here with uh, user design. And, and it, it's starting to vary a little bit. I'm okay with that. I think it looks great. But... It, I think the differences in this app are about as radically different as a Facebook app. So, but it's good, you know. And they, I guess they, I'll. They've... Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say. I, I mean, I'm playing with it. We'll see if I. I don't know if I'm going to abandon Fourth and Mayor. Yeah, you know, the thing that stinks about Fourth and Mayor is uh, it hasn't had an update in a while. So, but and that's the yeah. You know, the, I think just kind of moved on and. Uh, but yeah, what we've got here, Foursquare. I think uh, this might be the start of a kind of rebrand in a way. Uh, it's the uh, they're obviously moving to more towards exp exploration and trying to do more um, location discovery. Right. I'll be quite curious to see how well this works, considering things like local scout that's already on the phone. Um, you know, other options, things like uh, Nokia uh, have got you know a, a huge number of different here uh, suite uh, options that allow you to discover locations and things nearby to you. Um, what I still find, going, go on. We, we, we've been dealing with this, uh, with this a lot lately, uh, mm -hmm. as a lot of the crew from Mobile Nations has been in New York City, specifically Midtown Manhattan, for the last couple of weeks. And so we go out frequently, and we're like, oh, let's go grab dinner. And it's like that question, like, where do you want to go? You know? So you start busting out the Yelps, the Urban Spoons, the, uh, you know, here City Lens, Foursquare, <laughs> and I still find the best way is just to walk. I, I don't like pulling up all these places and like looking at reviews and all that kind of thing. It's just not my style. I, I just like to, the best thing about New York City is you walk around, you find a restaurant. They always had their menus on the street so you could just look at it and be like, okay, I'm going to eat here. That's still a classic thing, and, but. And saying that, the location discovery thing in, uh, in Barcelona kind of let us down with the uh, restaurant we went to on the last <laughs> night, which, uh, Ended yeah. up serving me what I thought was going to be cooked beef and ended up being this cold beef with crisps. Uh, that was a bad restaurant. That's, that's um, Barcelona for you. <laughs> that is Barcelona for you. But uh, yeah, I'll be quite, obviously this is, 
I think this is all about crowdsourcing location discovery. And uh, you know what? You know, it's clearly Foursquare are trying to expand and monetize their business a bit more now. They've got ads based on where you check in. Uh, a lot of stuff is now about trying to use your location more towards making a, a, a solid business think, model there. And reviews too and all that kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, they're trying to be a little bit of everything. Um, yeah, but it's great. I mean, it's a good app. You, it, this is important, right? Because when you get... I don't think people appreciate that when... Um, as someone who uses Android very infrequently, in fact, I got to get a new one. I need to get the HEC one. Um, oh, I want that phone. Whenever I pick up these devices, I'm in the, like the newbie. Like I'm like... <laughs> your brain immediately goes, I need Foursquare. Foursquare, you type that in. Or I need YouTube. It's mm-hmm. only after you've been on the platform for a while, and if you take the time to go discover new apps or read websites that you go, like, for instance, like uh, MetroTube. You know, I arrived, was like, this is the best YouTube experience on Windows Phone. Sure, okay. But if you're brand new to the platform, you don't know what the hell MetroTube is. You just know what YouTube is. And so this whole notion of app discovery is kind of, um, it's a time-consuming process. So it's real important that the first impression a user gets is, you know, A plus brand name apps. And then from there, so they'll discover later, oh, there's actually like MetroTube or PrimeTube, which actually has some, you know, great advantages and they try those out when they're more comfortable and they've established their, you know, A plus apps. But and that's why it's important to get points. Yeah. Because I deal with this, like I said, all the time. You know, it's just like I, uh, same on Android. I don't know what their, you know, secondary the third party best apps are that takes a while to figure out you know so you just go for the the top apps first and then you work your way down but yeah yeah um speaking of of uh, apps that have you know we we're talking about a great band name apps we've got i so i just talked about two there which were you know clearly designed from the ground up and were really nicely you know they were it's really solid work um we've then got untapped um have you tried out the untapped app yet i have not i okay. don't i don't do beer so what we've got effectively from Untapped is a um, support app, but it's interesting because I think it represents one of the first ones that uses, um, and I've I've already forgotten the the flipping uh, platform that it's built upon. I wrote something about it recently. Nope, it's gone from my mind. I'll try and remember about it later. Uh, but effectively, it's using a, a, a third party uh, library, which basically makes it possible to theoretically build apps. Um, we're using the same language, the same code, and deploy them out across iOS, uh, Android, and Windows Phone. Uh, so what, effectively what you get is the same app across all different platforms using kind of right. this web render uh, layer that runs on top. Um, and it's really annoying me that I can't remember the name of it. Phone- yeah, I'm surprised you don't remember the name of it. You, it's on the tip of my tongue. What is it? There it is. Phone, phone Gap. Exeva's just said it. Thank you very much, because that was annoying me. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the first phone gap articles you find on our site was written by me, so I feel even worse <laughs> about that fact. Well, it's a pretty <laughs> generic name. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So, anyway, it's built on phone gap. Um, and the app is. So, the, the, the navigation makes sense. It's, it is very iOS metaphor based. You know, uh, you've got. As, as an overall design, it makes sense, and it's kind of similar to, you know, Facebook's design in terms of you got select you know a big option up top right, big option the settings up top left. Um the problem is that it turns out it's not very performant. Uh, and that's the thing that I can really that's the thing that I'm finding with it. It's a bit of a slower app. It's it works, but it's not ideal. You can sort of drag and it's a bit inconsistent with the way it works. The real problem as well is that this the wrapper has completely broken linear navigation. So everything that you tap to try and change between these tabs, unlike a pivot or a, a uh, panorama control is effectively a new page. So when you press back, you're going through every tab press that you've pressed. So you have to basically just go back, 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 just to get out of the app. And it's yeah. incredibly yeah. frustrating. It needs it needs work there. Um, but it is there. It is a real app that's sort of come around. And you know, Untapped is is not some big uh, company that everybody is aware of. It's just probably the most popular uh, beer network, certainly in the yeah. states. Um, I was going to say I'm I'm sort of it's the same thing with Hurl when Hurl, <laughs> which is a funny name mm-hmm. for. A service, uh, you know, their app is very iOS looking too. And so the question is, do you wait for these companies to, you know, invest and make a full fledged Metro Windows Phone native app, which we could be waiting for a while, or do we take what we can get now and then, if the popularity dictates to them that they should make a 
you know, full native Windows Phone app, they'll get around to it. And even these guys at Untapped have been like, give us feedback, you know, all this kind of stuff. And we'll, you know, so I think if Untapped becomes successful enough, they'll, they'll eventually revise, make a 2.0 app or whatever, and it'll be what everybody wants it to be, you know. And Hurl, the Hurl guys said the same thing. They were like, they, they were really like, they were really nice. And they were saying how, you know, like, sorry, everybody, you know, like, they just wanted to get their app out there and their service. So people exactly. can use it. And I was on their side. I was like, yeah, this is actually a really cool service. It works fine on the phone, you know. That's all I care about. Worry about the design later. And so, you know, but they're very receptive. They're like, we're going to redesign it. Don't worry, you know, all this. And so, you know, it's fine. This is the middle ground stuff. It helps to allow them to experiment and get onto the platform without necessarily committing a lot of financial resources to it. And in that sense, I think it's a good thing. Yeah, and, it's, and as you say, it's, it is good to see that PhoneGap works and that actually this will be an option for people who are just trying to get their apps onto our platform, you know, at minimum cost, minimum work. And it's, you know, important that these avenues exist. Uh, so, you know, I'm glad to see it. Um, yeah. That about brings us to the end of the app section. Is there anything that you think I've missed? That you want any apps that you want to talk about this week? I mean, there's just been a, a couple of them. Uh, Open Table, I've been using frequently oh, it's yeah. a bit city uh it's really nice for a reason I, it's so convenient like once you create an account with them which takes a minute um you know like there's like a few restaurants i like to go to in the city uh in manhattan like max brenner if you're ever in new york city in manhattan go to max brenner it's by union square it's a really famous like chocolate restaurant meaning like you can order any kind of food but they always have like chocolate stuff on it like um they have like vidalia onion battered onion rings that you dip in a chocolate sauce you know it's like it's really delicate i mean just like it's really good stuff but i go there on occasion and with this i can literally within like two taps red you know reserve a table for a couple people and it's just like you get the confirmation and it's just so easy this is for me like what smartphones are about i hate calling i don't i've, I've never called for reservations in my life but now that i know that i could just because it's weird. I don't know. I, I just, it's not my style. You know? And I also don't think that I had in advance. But if I could just whip out an app and be like in 45 minutes, be like, okay, give me a table, two people, boom, boom, and click, and it's done. You know. And so the Windows Phone 8 version came out recently. It's really nice. They even did um, a lock screen integration so that when you make a reservation, you can have it show up on your lock screen uh, as a reminder of what time and place That's and all nice. that kind of stuff. And that's just like a smart thing to do. I'm not saying I'm going to use it all the time, but uh, you know, I love when developers are taking advantage of all the tools. And these guys did a great job with it. And they were actually another company that reached out to us after we posted our article. We're like, hey, thanks for you know doing that. You know, developers are real proud of their work. You know, and you know, it's kind of cool. I don't know. This is what I'm saying, though. We're seeing a lot more of these developers being interested in Windows Phone and having good experiences and. They reach out to us, and you know they, they want to interact with uh, the consumer. And for me, that's a great thing to, to have. I'm glad we can serve as a sort of a, a mediator between uh, you know these companies and you guys, you know, because that's what's important, right? That's great. Yeah, I, I say I actually wish Open Table was available over here because I think I would probably use them on those lines. I particularly like right. to sort of have it. The, that lock screen integration sounds really smart. Um, yeah, I yeah. Should, I've almost, I almost forgot. I should point out as well. If you haven't already read it, uh, we've got. Uh, uh, Paul's review of uh, Gravity Guide 2 up on the site today. Um, if you haven't already taken the plunge on Gravity Guide 2 or having a think about it, it is one of the first games that you know or popular franchises to come to Windows Phone before everyone else. So uh, it's, it represents perhaps more than the game. You know, it represents a bigger uh, deal than the game itself uh, perhaps does uh, in terms of the fact that it's not really about gravity anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You consider the fact that when you jump, gravity pulls you down, in which case, you know, Mario. Gravity. I, I I found it weird. Yeah, I was gonna say how the whole gimmick of switching up and down was removed. Like, I it. oh, I know, I did too. Uh, and uh, you know, but I understand the criticisms of the first one where it got too hard at one point. That you know, it's like it was unplayable. I think you said that. Um, yeah. But but I still like the whole gimmick of like switching between. So I don't know. It was like a neat like game. <laughs> I was a surprise in part two where it's like, wait, they got rid of that. Like that's like the yeah. whole thing. You know. Um, I haven't actually, played Gravity Guy. What were you going to say? No, I was going to say, actually, one of the nice things about Gravity Guy, if you didn't try it, I mean, I had it on my Surface. It made a pretty good two-player game as yes. well. There was a, a sort of option yeah. for two players, and because you're all on one screen, it just it really worked. Um, so you're saying you haven't played Gravity Guy too? 
I have, but very little. I, I don't think I even bought it, but uh, I, I thought it looked great. You know, when I played it for a few minutes, I was like, oh, this, they did a real nice job. But I haven't had a chance to really get involved. Although, I'll probably put it on the, the 920 after this and start playing it. It, again. it. it looks and runs really well, and it is a good core game, but it kind of feels like it's um, it's sort of... Uh, taking a, you know moving a bit more towards the the inspiration of sort of jetpack joyride uh, trying to be an endless yeah. runner that you know you just keep building up on uh, the thing that i think it's missing is it's got things like amplifier and boosts and these sort of ideas that you you pay coins and you get these upgrades which you know really important um but the problem is it doesn't really have much in terms of variation in the middle of the game itself i don't i don't think there are you know these little gates you need to go through or you need to try and jump on exactly the middle of a platform to get more coins um you have to avoid little minds but things like uh one of the things that uh jetpack joyride got so right was having the different suits and the different things that you could right. go into and you know like mr uh, cuddles as everyone remembers um that kind of mixed up the gameplay and kept it really you know kept it different every time whereas this feels very repetitive and very samey every time um that was my personal opinion and paul addresses it quite early on uh, from the sounds of it paul's come way quite impressed with the game uh, you know it's it's not an expensive not particularly expensive game either uh, what's it clocking at? Is it two dollars or is it one of the cheaper ones? Uh, yeah, two dollar ninety nine. And so, yeah, absolutely worth a check if you're still on the fence about it and the trial wasn't enough. Then uh, have a listen, you know, have a look at, uh, at Paul's review. He's obviously got much further the game than uh, myself or Dan have. Uh, and yeah, have a have a look. So there. on to community um, chat room. Get ready to put any questions that you'd like towards myself and Dan. Dan is, I'm sure, going to be looking through the, uh, the comments now for me to. Uh, pick out any good questions um and we're gonna i back suppose to... <laughs> oh i do want to just briefly brag for a second about my little samsung tablet that i got last week we didn't <laughs> see my post on it um because i know like i actually don't like samsung like a lot of you guys by respect i don't want to say i don't like them um just that be- thing behind me is a 55 inch samsung tv and i freaking love it it's amazing uh <laughs> But, you know, they operate as separate divisions, and their TVs are great. Uh, this computer, this tablet I got was really awesome. I bought it actually mostly because it was white. <laughs> it was like I didn't know they made a white one. And I went to my Microsoft store, which, by the way, I, I got to give a shout-out to the Huntington Station Microsoft store. I go in there now f- quite frequently, and apparently I'm a local celebrity because of my Windows phone. <laughs> Yeah, they, they all read the site, so it's kind of funny. But like, I walked in there, and I was like... Do you walk in and tell them, I'm kind of big deal on the internet? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm famous on the internet. No, but they're like, oh, we read the site all the time, you know? So good, good on them, at least staying up on their Windows Phone news. So uh, really good guys, though. But I saw this white one. I was like, wait, what the hell is that? And I, I, I saw the original Samsung Ative tablet when it came out, and I was kind of like, yeah, whatever. But then I saw it in white, and I was like, ooh, that, that caught my eye, and I saw I had to buy it. <laughs> and so I ended up selling George my Acer W510, which up to this point was my go-to Windows 8 tablet, which I still really like, especially since it's like 10 inches, and it's, it's nice and small. Um, this one's 11.6 inches, a little bit bigger, and I got the keyboard with it. But I really wanted it because it was the first device that I have that has a digitizer with the Wacom pen on it. I've never had that before. And that totally changed my view on these devices. Like, I really liked them. But the tablet for me was, like, mostly consuming stuff. And if I really wanted to do anything productive, I had to get, like, a keyboard with it, which this does. You click in a keyboard. And it's a great keyboard. But as soon as you click a keyboard onto this, it changes the dynamic. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, this is a laptop now. And you want to start doing some more heavy processing. And then you start to realize the Atom processor is pretty limited if you want to do, like, you know, full Photoshop, of course, or anything, you know, like that. But it's weird because you, you think of it as like, oh, this is a laptop. But when I started using the pen, the pen was just so easy and fluid to use, but I was still able to keep it, like, tablet mode. And so... I loved it. It's just great. And so I, I use that now all the time. I throw it in my bag and it's just like, it's great if I need to write down something or, you know, cause that works basically in all the, uh, all their apps and it just works really well. So if you're looking for a new, um, tablet, you know, go check that out. I, I'm really impressed with these Atom tablets. I think they're fantastic. And as you say, they, they, you have to bear in mind that it's not going to run full Photoshop. It'll run your office suite and it'll run a lot of apps. That sure. You need to run in a clinch every now and again, but you're going to start it's, but it's still it, it, it's it's faster than the Surface RT. So if you're okay with the Surface RT or you wish you had something a little bit more powerful, these Atom tablets are fantastic. And as long as you keep it in tablet mode, 
you, you're going to have a, a great experience. And I'm really excited about these. I'm actually more excited about how this stuff is going to evolve as soon as these processors become more powerful, resolutions go up. I'm really psyched about these like 8-inch tablets because I think that's going to be so sweet. I love the idea of like throwing a little 8-inch full Windows 8 tablet in my bag. It's mm -hmm. um, so very exciting stuff. That's just my rant. But and by the way, I'm trying to work out something with the, the Microsoft Store here in Huntington for workshops or something like that. So we'll do a, a Windows Phone day at one of these at the store sometime. So if you're in Long Island, you know, keep that in mind. That's, that sounds cool. Um, right, let's go to comments from last time, which was uh, episode five, uh, 158 even. Uh, that was, uh, we posted that March the 21st. So it was back in March, blimey. Hasn't been that long. Uh, let's see, <laughs> there were a few comments regarding how the video was playing in the app, so I'm going to ignore those ones. Um, Ed Sheriff says, there's been leak of a desktop uh, Windows Blue build 9364. Uh, were people expecting to see more features? The additions to the Metro side are nice, but I think it's a shame that desktop seems to have been completely neglected. It seems more like Windows 8 SB2 to me. Uh, Don't, actually, since he's uh, said that, there's been a lot of changes uh, to that, and we now have things like the start button that we're expecting and the, the option to boot straight into desktop for Windows 8. Yeah, um, but be careful with, once again, with these previews and judging yes. about features. It, this is early on. Mary J. Foley and Paul Thorat were talking about this recently. They, they actually don't expect the start button to appear in the first preview release. That's supposedly going to come out during the build conference. But that's going to probably be added later. Although they said that may be pushed up because everybody's so anticipating it. But I think whatever, when we see even the, the actual preview release, when it comes out at the end of June, even that won't be feature complete and all that. So judging what's involved so far based on these leaked, you know, releases, it's, um, don't do that because I think they're, they are going to put a lot of stuff in there and I think they're going to save some of the best stuff towards the end. So just be careful. Yeah. Um, so what else we've got? Uh, oh, everybody's talking about the yeah, so Jay Kavanaugh was just in the old comments was saying that uh, he found the comments about the sunsetting of Google Reader a little comical, uh, and RSS as a standard was uh, you know be the fact that it doesn't need to exist anymore. We were talking uh, about Google Reader being uh, retired, of course. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. quite old news now, but I think we can safely say that a lot of other RSS readers have come up and uh, are doing you know doing things perfectly with regards to uh, being able to aggregate all your news into one location. Uh, so I'm going to sort of stick uh, stick over that one uh, and. Just a quick shout-out to Nakazul, who said thank you for uh, his, for him his shout-out. You're more than welcome, and uh, I hope everything's going well with you. Uh, the rest of them were mostly talking about YouTube. So we're going to go to comments and questions from the chat room. Um, I'll take uh, one here that I see. Yeah. Uh, Flags TV is asking about the catwalk. Is it the 925? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, that's... I'm pretty sure that's the case. And we said earlier, the 920 is the Verizon variant of that. Is T-Mobile going to get it? Um, yeah, yeah. T-Mobile is expected to get this device. It's uh, I don't think it'll be for a little while. I think maybe June-ish. But yeah, expect this on T-Mobile. That was the last time uh, I heard. Sprint won't be getting this. So if you're on Sprint, just burn your Sprint accounts because you're not going to get a Nokia phone. Um, they're they're like I said before, I think in the other podcast, they're just being jerks about Windows Phone. So although they're going to get the Samsung device and the HTC one, Samsung uh, Sprint is not expected to actually push those devices. They're just going to stock them and sell them and, you know, throw you guys a bone. But they're not going to be, yeah, well, they're sold their souls to Apple and the iPhone, and they have to push and sell those devices. Otherwise, they're going to go broke. And so, um, but yeah, T-Mobile expected, uh, Verizon obviously expected very soon. That's what's really cool about all this now. We're seeing Nokia flagship devices are going to go more to other carriers. and Everybody's be able to get one. And Absolutely. trust me, once you get one, you don't go back. <laughs> Um, Derek D'Souza was just asking earlier about uh, Windows Phone 8 Blue and what we know, you know, Blue is in the uh, this whole, whole Windows 8 Blue push, what we know so far about what might be coming to that. Um, we've mentioned sort of some firmware updates that Nokia are bringing around, things like the double tap to wake um, the phone screen. Of course, that's not really necessarily tied to GDR2, as I think. We're, we're thinking GDR2 is going to be Blue, is that the or no. one we kind of call Blue? No, no, Blue is after GDR3. Blue is a, oh, really? a it's different. Yeah, yeah. GDR two and three are technically minor updates, but they're going to be they're going to add features like you know FM radio. GDR three actually may bump up to the 1080p resolution support for new hardware. Um, 
but they're just incremental feature updates that are like sort of patching the Windows Phone 8 OS to make it, you know, stuff that they couldn't finish in time for the actual Windows Phone 8 release is what those are for. But Blue is still, that's why Blue has been projected to not maybe come out until early 2014. Um, okay. It's actually supposed to be behind the Windows 8 Blue release. Even Windows 8 Blue won't be out till you know, the fall though we're going to get the preview release at the end of June. But, you know, I'm hearing like August, September, I think they're talking. Um, okay. Maybe even into October. So Windows Phone Blue is still a while away. But with GDR2 and GDR3 coming around, bringing new features and updates, uh, you can expect to have constant, you know, refreshes and new features brought to your current devices, which is the important thing here. Yeah, okay. So... Uh so you know, we, we've got a rough time stamp on it. Uh, it is going to be the, the sort of the large one, and we think we believe that Blue, of course, is also going to bring around some degree of uh, capability to install uh, Windows Phone 8 apps on Windows 8 and potentially vice versa as well. There's some talk around uh, some cross marketplace support there, finally, which I think is one of the biggest deals that we can be looking forward to personally. Um, Let's just see what else there is. Uh, oh, yeah, there was a question from uh, Dylan O'Brien earlier of what do we think of the new YouTube layout? Is it Metro enough? Uh, Dylan, obviously, have listened to the start of the uh, podcast. We had a discussion about Metro in general as a, you know, what needs to be Metro, what doesn't. Um, I think we're in agreement that YouTube is one of the apps that's starting to show the evolution of the Metro language and perhaps right. you know, yeah. seeing things. Part of the reason I think the Metro isn't used as a term anymore is because the language now doesn't really exist, and it's kind of a case of there are these cool pivots, these are the cool panorama controls, but we need to start moving away from them and start coming up with other ideas and trying to keep things fresh. So I think it's a, I think it is, I think it's a, a really good app. I think it keeps things a bit interesting, whilst at the same time uh, being familiar enough for everyone to navigate with pretty much no tutorial, uh, and that's definitely good news from my perspective. So when asked about Mobley, whether or not I'm going to review it, I'm not actually familiar with Mobley. Um, I, I remember I did come across it, I think, when it first came out, um, and I'm downloading it now, so I'll take a look at it. It's another like, photo-sharing type of app or something like that. I forgot what it is. Uh, now I'll take a look. We'll see. Cool. Um, and let's just see if there's anything else. Uh, someone goes, Edward Sheriff asks, oh, you mean Apollo Plus, that's GDR2. Actually, it's not true. Apollo Plus doesn't actually exist. Apollo Plus is the catch name for GDR1 through GDR3. It's the culmination of all of those. The whole project is basically Apollo Plus. It's the idea of uh, fixing Apollo or making it more feature complete what they originally intended. So GDR2 is not Apollo Plus. It's There is no Apollo Plus update. It's just a culmination of those updates. It's that whole project, this whole idea of delivering um, incremental updates every few months that are smaller uh, but keep the platform alive, as opposed to, say, like Mango, which was like the 7.5 and 500 new features, but we had to wait an eternity for it. So they're doing it in smaller piecemeal now. That's Apollo Plus, but there is actually no code word. And they've also, by the way, abandoned the whole Apollo, Mango. Yeah. They got rid of that. They're just like boring GDR2, GDR3 things. So Very disappointing. And last question I was going to take from uh, Rodri, which is actually quite interesting, or Rodri it might be. Uh, is there going to be a Windows Phone update to support CalDAV? Uh, because doesn't time, expa time yes. expansion, he says, from Google run, run out so Google run out soon and they'll drop Exchange support? There was a very quiet extension of Exchange support, which Google have put out. And, right. uh, do we know when we're expecting the CalDAV update? If sure. I think, I mean, GDR2, you know, makes sense, right? Okay. Uh, we know... Or look at the Nokia firmware PR 2.0 that we talked about. We gave you a sneak peek that wanted to tap the screen to wake it up and all that kind of stuff. Um, those are correlated, uh, or you know, I mean, those are going to happen together for a good reason. So you're going to get this new Nokia firmware that's going to unlock new features that they've been working on. You also get this OS update that will presumably fix this, you know, CalDev kind of thing too. So I mean, that's the point of these incremental updates that they're doing. Yeah, exactly right. And that about wraps us up, really, for community. So, uh, Dan, do you want to take it away? Oh, sure. You can find us all on Twitter at WP Central. You can follow myself at Daniel underscore Rubino. You can follow George at Coppertop004. Rich Edmonds, our main UK writer, he's at Rich Edmonds. You can follow Jay here. Of course, he's at JT Bennett. Uh, you can follow Paul. He's at SegaCon. If you have gaming questions, make sure you ask him. Don't ask me because I won't know. Uh, <laughs> you can also uh, 
follow Dave, who's in charge of our forums, which make sure you go in there if you have questions, you want to talk to developers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, or if you want to talk about your phone and you're having issues, head to our forums. And that's he's at big underscore D5. And of course, can't forget Sam. Sam is one of our newest writers, and he's uh, very hilarious on Twitter and always fun to interact with. You can get him at Sam Sabri, S-A-M-S-A-B-R-I. It's been a Mobile Nations podcast. Go to mobilenations.com for more great shows covering everything mobile. Right over to the WP Central Forums, which I already just plugged, so there you go again. Um, thanks to the WP Central store for sponsoring us. Go buy yourself a case. Treat yourself uh, by sponsoring the podcast. Thanks also to, also to these great artists for the music at ccmixture.org. Swim below by the Leviathan or whatever. And gone by TJ. So I'm tired of reading those. Just go and read our show notes if you really want to click on them. Although they are cool songs. Although maybe we should change it up again. It's been years since yeah. we changed this. It's probably time. So, we, might, we might have a little hunt for some new music. So apologies for taking so long on that podcast, although make it up for you. We're going to try to do one next week in the UK. You'll see me in London, and we're going to do one post-Nokia show. We'll talk about whatever was just announced. Maybe we'll even have an actual device we can actually show on oh, the podcast. That'd be nice. Don't get too hopeful. They gave me the 920 last time, so just saying, you know, could happen. Um Bug Nokia to make sure that we get whatever they announce so we can show <laughs> the world's largest Windows Phone site audience what we have. But there we go. Tune in next week. It's going to be very exciting to catch up on Windows Phone stuff. There you go. Take care. Bye.